Hi, my name is Scott Park Phillips and I'm talking to you from Boulder, Colorado. I wanted to talk a little bit about more Tai Chi secrets today. Maybe something about how power is generated, but also talk about a, my discovery that Tai Chi is actually a form of mime training and how those two things are related and why Oh, a lot of people are just getting confused. They've seen my previous videos. When they've read just part of something I've written and not the whole thing, they often get more confused. And so I just thought I'd try to spell it out a little bit here. Uh, I started studying Chen style Tai Chi Chuan in about the late 80s, 88, 89, something like that. And, uh, and this was really a key part. So the key thing you're doing is making a circle like that. That's your key action. You can do it in reverse. You're making circles. You're making little circles, big circles, all sorts of shapes like that. And, and everything is just putting it together. So one of the things that, uh, that's funny about YouTube is you see uh, like everybody's obsessed with applications. I mean, this was even true before, before YouTube, but it got worse because YouTube became its own type of theater. It's like application theater. And these kind of arts, like it's magic tricks. If you're doing it right, it's magic tricks. They, they look different. Uh, applications are often absurd because, and I'm not even gonna go into that with maybe another video, but the idea that, you know, that this movement or this movement is like some technique uh, or, you know, or that this movement is a technique or this movement is a technique is, is kind of absurd. It, yeah, I, you can fight with any shape. You can fight with any shape right? because you can target, you can mess up someone's structure, you can improve your position and you can mess up their balance and you can use a drop step and get power. Almost any position will work. It's not, it's not, that's a whole, that whole thing is absurd. So I knew that pretty early on because we had the expression, you know, uh, every tsun, every inch is power. Every, every tsun is a technique. Or, and then you even have every tsun is infinite techniques because you can, from any position, you can go in any direction. So what's an application? <laughs> it's just, it's just YouTube theater. All right. Put that aside. What, where is the mime? What is it? So wh wh why, is it, why do I say this is mime? Well, in fact, the beginning instruction was that your hand is like a, um, a, a brush, a paintbrush, right? So it splays when you push on it. When you push into space, it splays, it opens, and it comes back to a point. So you have open and close, right? But they're actually talking about the brush spreading. And that that's how you make circles. That's actually how you paint because you are painting in space, right? You learn how to make perfect circles the same way you would in art class. You make a perfect, perfect circles. And you also learn how to make straight lines, really straight lines. And put tips on them. It's completely structured the way, <laughs> in that way. Uh, and then you have like th these basics, like a really key for like, you know, just in terms of wrist motion, right? How you show water, how, how you show the banks of a river. Um, there's all these really specific mudras. As I was saying, this is the butterfly. This is um, putting on a hat. This is combing, you know, brushing the beard. That's the shape of a halberd blade, right? This is tying a belt. And you even have lots of things. And this is true in many martial arts. Where, so I stand in a very particular way. The torso is measured precisely. But, but it's expanded in a very particular way. Mo much more exaggerated in... Um, See Balinese dance uh, for prepubescent girls, but you know, where they're dancing like that, right? But we're actually doing something very similar. It's just more hidden. And and well, I measure my own body by the full extension of my Achilles tendon, so so that I know where a point is in space, right? That's an exact place. So I can always go there. So I can tell a story about a little boy. And remember, we were talking, and then the little boy came in. Right? And there's this, and these details, like, that's, that's key. Just like you see in illusion mime. I'm talking mostly about image mime here that's recognizable to a particular audience. So, uh, so the really good example from Indian dance is that, is that uh, this is a peacock feather, 
right? And this is a flute. Um, and, and the flute, the flute, of course, the flute, if you were going to image mime it, be like rocking out like this or something, right? But if you're going to illusion mime it, uh, you're not, sorry, if you're going to illusion mime it, if you're going to image mime it, uh, you, they, use, they use particular mudra. And they actually, from here, they would bring it in to the mouth. So instead of going, you know, to show that, the blowing, they put it here. And then this actually comes in a little closer. So you know this distance, it's constant. If you were to move it away, the hands stay a constant distance. You're, that's structured deep inside your body, right? And then even that can just mean the flute, right? So the, the, that's, that's a cultural tradition, everybody recognizes it. Same thing, your body takes to, goes to a certain position, so the hand is always at the, at the same height. So it looks like the boy has a certain height. And, and your, so your body organizes that way. Uh, like Taiji, right? You, you have all these sorts of patterns where I'm, say I'm coming, I'm coming up, right? So my hand, my hand, right, my hand turns over. My hand, if I didn't move, didn't go up, my hand would turn over and go down. But my hand manages to, this hand, manages to stay at the same point in space because these are calibrated, right, for an illusion. This is very theatrical stuff, okay? It's pretty key. These kinds of flowing waves that you have all over Taiji are there. Now, the wrist is absolutely key, okay? It's because in Taiji we have Peng, Ji, Lu, and An, okay? So they call, talk about Ji Dian. Ji Dian, there's a power point here, a power point here, power point in the center of the palm, and then in the heel of the hand. So you go through them, right? And that's, and that creates that illusion. Right, of the wave. It's absolutely essential part of Chen style Tai Chi. And it, you don't learn it slowly. If you notice my fingers stay, basic, my fingertips stay in one place. So I do it. Fingers tips stay in one place while the wrist rotates. Right? So it's, it's all about illusion. And you can use those same illusions to, to um, generate uh, angular power, for sure. But that's not how power is generated in, in general, in Tai Chi, right? So you have these illusions. And this one's actually fairly difficult to create, the first move. And so you see now people doing something like this where they're hiding. Oh, you have no idea how much hiding is going on. They're hiding all the little circles. Like, you'll see this one. You'll see this one. They'll go here, right? And then instead of doing the grind, they'll just go straight to open. <laughs> and you didn't even see the drinking, right? So they cut this. They cut this. And then you'll even see this, like people will put their hand here or, you know, or turn more or something rather than show the butterfly, right? This is tying up the pants, expanding the dantian in all directions. This practice, this, does, this takes real time. You know, if you want to learn uh, Chen style Tai Chi, you've got to do what I did and do like train four hours a day for five years, something like that. It doesn't come, if you do it an hour a day, right? Um, you just, you're, it's like you're in a boat and you just, keep, you're rowing and you just keep going downstream anyway. You don't make headway. Um, the, there's too much material that you, you have to do, you have to do it longer deeper intensity, you have to stop watching TV, you know, <laughs> get up early in the morning, blah, blah, blah. So, so these basic patterns, though, are from mime. And, and this, you know, it's the same. Because I've trained my body to do an exact shape, it does. It does it exactly that way. And this is the way it was taught. They were never explained, hey, this is mime. It just, that was got out. Oh, I was talking about secrets. Okay, there's four types of secrets, right? There's outdoor secrets that you get when you become a disciple, right? Then there's indoor secrets, which they don't like to give away, but you get and you learn them inside, right? Then there's like inside the bedroom secrets. Don't ask. 
Then there's six ears never hear secrets. Okay, so that's like three people never hear, right? And then there's three ears never hear secrets. That's really advanced secrets. That's the ones I like. So also look at the finger patterning in Chen style. It's, it's, it's clearly designed for doing mime. This is like, I shoot a laser at you. Catch your whiskers. Catch your whiskers. I speak the truth. It, it's clearly a form of mime. Holy mackerel, I cannot believe that anybody's arguing otherwise. Once I figured out that the story here is drinking the golden elixir, Xuan Wu, suddenly waking from a dream, butterfly means waking from a dream, sign language, ties up his pants, expands his dantian in all directions, puts on his hat, strokes his beard, ties his belt, strokes his beard again, <laughs> steps outside, and what does he see, right? I, I laid this out, once I figured that out, and there's a bunch of other ones, right? If you watch some of the shorter videos I have, um, I explain individual moves, like, um, like the door gods holding the, the twisted hemp rope, and for catching ghosts. It's called Golden Cock Stands on One Leg because Golden Cock um, guards the threshold between the living and the dead and um, the night and the day. And he's, he's up on top of a peach tree. And the door gods guard that. You, I think it's you and Lou guard the, uh, the tree. And they, they have these hemp ropes, right? So they're, they're like matching gods. And they're actually made out of, these are gods made out of peach wood, which is an exorcist tool as well as the hemp rope. It, it, it's clearly there's a story, but what exactly is the story? The whole story? I go into that in my book in great detail, how you get deep into Chinese culture and sort out what these things are. Do I leave some like, what is it? Unleft answers? Yes. Can you go and pick at those what is it questions? Um, yeah, you could do that if you want to spend your time doing that, but you won't attack my central thesis that it's mime. It will, <laughs> anyway, I shouldn't worry about attacks. You should just have fun. So. So the thing is, they, they're hiding things. They were, oh my gosh, the hiding was insane. So another master or some other teacher would show up and my teachers would be like, okay, they, they would just miss moves. So they'd go like this and they'd just go here. They'd skip the, they'd skip the, fir the first posture, right? And then this one, they wouldn't make a circle. They'd just go here, right? Or, you know, and I already showed that other one. They'd hide things all the time. They'd hide all sorts of weird things. You'd be like, what? Why are they doing that? Because the students who are regular would recognize. They go, oh, they're hiding. And they'd hide different things for different masters. When different people would show up, um, somebody, somebody, a guest student would show up and they'd hide stuff. Uh, uh, when, when my two teachers, George Xu and Zhang Shui-Shin, um, split, like <laughs> the students who went with Zhang Shui-Shin, which was not me, uh, got like, you know, we're like, hey, we learned some new secrets, you know. So then they showed them to us, which was funny. Uh, because, you know, we didn't understand why you would keep a secret. We don't understand. Because we didn't understand the theatrical history and this, the whole pattern of, of uh, a low caste teaching an amateur, which was high caste. It's completely inverted reality. All right. So, so you have all this mime in there. Yeah? It makes shapes. It makes shapes in space. It shows the water swirling. It shows the dragon coming out of the water. Right? It's this, these kind of wah, patterns in the body. Yeah, can you fight, can you fight with Shunfa? Yes, for infighting, of course, because you want to create space to hit, right? Space to hit. Uh, you know, but of course you create space that can also hit you. <laughs> but so you, you, you want to take away space. That's a whole other thing. It's like you use your shunfa to take away space when you're close in fighting, for sure. But uh, for generating power, mm, no, <laughs> you don't use shunfa. That's a mistake. Many, 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 many masters make this mistake. Okay, so where does power come from? It comes from four things. So how is power generated? Well, let's just talk about the physics first, because internal martial arts uh, function by illusions. But the physics of 
<clears throat> of power is the, the first one is gravity or the drop step, right? Drop step is how you get power. So uh, you should be able to do four beats per second. This is katak, right? Practicing about four beats per second. And uh, you have the same thing in like samba. That kind of thing. Samba oh, or a flamenco, right? About that speed. Even the waltz, even the waltz, it's about six, eight beats per second. Um, and I noticed uh, when I travel around to teach workshops, a lot of times people just don't have um, the speed. The speed you have to be able to do drop steps almost instantaneously to have power. Okay, the other kind of power is momentum. So you shoot, <laughs> come in, come in long, right? You have gain speed and go in, uh, but your mass hits somebody. It's mass times acceleration, or oh, mass times speed. Mass times velocity squared over two. So you gotta have that, that. You can also have, there's also some power you gain from spinning. Um, so physics is out of the way. Now, internal power is an illusion based on, on four things, okay? And the first one is empty. So your body has to be empty of intent. And the main reason for this is the same reason why why you don't want to have a tell before you punch, right? Why you don't want to telegraph. You want to just the punch to come out of nowhere. It's just there's nothing there and you punch, right? To just, so they don't see it coming, right? It's the same thing, but at the touch level. They touch you if you have no intent in your body in, in the point where they touch you or anywhere in your body, preferably. Uh, they won't be able to read what's happening. And this will create a, 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 a physical cognitive dissonance. In the physical realm, they experience cognitive dissonance. They don't know what you're doing, so it stalls them. And then you can do so. You throw them and hit them, stuff like that. Because you've opened up this moment of confusion where they don't know what's going on. So that's the main, there are many purposes for being empty, but that's a key one, for, especially from a fighting point of view, is to create an illusion. An illusion. You're doing something different than what they, you appear to be doing and it creates cognitive dissonance. Second one is counterbalance. You have to counterbalance all incoming forces. No matter what force comes in towards you, it has to be counterbalanced, okay? It has to, otherwise you'll end up force against force, okay? And, and this is based on the basic principle that if, if, you, if you push um, off of something solid, you'll, you'll push yourself over and uh, so when people are pushing, you know for sure they're leaning. Anytime someone's pushing, you know they're leaning. It's 100% test. <laughs> 100%. So, so uh, one of the things we do is we'll, we'll do the form, and you'll do it exactly, but with resistance. So you'll have a partner, like, putting their hands, grabbing you, pushing you, trying to shake you, trying to change your direction, trying to mess up your arms, uh, mess up your balance, right? And giving you forces. It's... it's um, it's a very particular type of resistance, support resistance, right? So they're just trying to mess you up and you do the form and you shouldn't, your form shouldn't vary at all. That means that you've now figured, you've mastered, you know, you've mastered uh, uh, resolving all incoming forces to zero, you could say, uh, so that you don't go force against force. Otherwise you'd have to like adjust, you'd have to use technique to get around someone's force. You have to like move a little bit. When they push on you, you move, you change angles and stuff. Can't be any angle changing. You, you can't use any of that wrist technique, right? Okay, so <clears throat> that's uh, shoe and then counterbalance. And then the next one is called, um, is, is that your whole body has to be a single unit. So I've shown this in some other videos. This, this connectivity has to be constant. There's no break anywhere. It's constant connectivity, single unit. So when they touch you, 
they touch 170 pounds. They feel all of your mass. You're a single unit. And they, all of these come from, all four, are sort of fallout from practicing the golden elixir. They're revealed through the meditation visualization practice known as the golden elixir. They just, you, once you have the golden elixir practice, then you, you, you understand how to invent Neigong, how Neigong will remake your whole body to be a single unit and to be uh, unbroken, constant. That's, um, and you can train it more and more, but that's the key uh, is whole body power. And that's how you get gravity. That's how you get all the gravity tricks. So, right, they feel 170 pounds when you touch them. And then the last one is called Chi on the back. And you have to have uh, Neigong first, pretty much, um, to get this. And so it, it's, just a, it's a trick that allows you to go up. So it gives you up power anytime you want it, or the illusion of up power, really. Because um, anytime they touch, it's your, your back. They, they're like on your back. Like put them on your back. <laughs> they don't want to go. They keep not wanting to go. And it, uh, it messes them up. So, okay, so there's, then that's the four. So, uh, what are they? Uh, empty, body completely empty of intent, counterbalance, negong, whole body unity, and uh, chi on the back. So, and if you try to get chi on the back without getting negong, uh, it won't work. It doesn't work. It just makes you stiff. So, you gotta have the whole, you gotta have the whole picture. So, then there's three ways that this is applied that I know of. I bet there's more. Uh, one is the, the, the George Shoe method, which is I touch you and, and I, I force you to unconsciously choose uh, whether to keep your balance or to keep your structure. Because there, there, there's no such thing as root. That's, that's, <laughs> you, you can't. I can nail your foot to the ground and just still fall over. Um, there's no such thing as, uh, as root. There's just balance, balancing on your feet. So... And what most people think of as root is just leaning. So that's super easy to control. So what happens is I touch you and you're, uh, you're disoriented, but you're disoriented faster than the cognitive mind can realize. Or is this, maybe you could call it a physical cognitive mind, whatever it is. If you don't realize what's happened. So you, you, and if you've chosen to, uh, to keep your balance rather than your structure, then I could just hit you freely. Just anywhere I want, any time, any force. Uh, there'll, there'll be no resistance in for that gap anyway. And then, and you, but you keep doing it. So, so there's like no resistance. It's like a hail of fists. Um, so that's one, that's one way. Then you have um, uh, Chen Zhenghua, or Je, uh, Joseph Chen, has, has a whole system. Now he took out the mind completely, so it's like no wrist movement at all. It's crazy. It doesn't look good, I don't think. But they, they have this whole idea of like still point, right? And you're rotating around a still point. That's their, their method. And they, this is like rua or split, uh, but he just calls it rotate, which is actually a better name for it. And they, they use the same trick, touch, mess up, so that there's a cognitive disorientation about whether or not person should balance or keep their structure, and you, 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 you take the space away. You bring them closer to you, you seize them. Nah, now nah, their whole body. You seize them, and then you just grind them up in like a blender. You just grind them up with no resistance. And, and the third way, uh, you see in the Yang style, Tai Chi a lot, or well, not a lot, a few masters can do it. It's some Wu style too. Uh, what happens is, is you, 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 for, you, you unbalance them so quickly that they are, they use, they try to use their structure against you. Like they try, they stick to you in order to keep their structure so that they don't fall over. And then you control them as a rigid unit. So that there's that trick too. It's, it's like almost the opposite. It's a reverse. Anyway, those are the big tricks. That's how power is generated. If you like this video, please subscribe. And thanks for listening. Put your questions in, in the comments section. Thank you. And please buy my books on Amazon. Check out my free articles on academia.edu and my website at northstarmartialarts.com. Thanks for subscribing.